Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. So nandito na naman po tayo for a live stream. And uh, and we will going to study right now module 5 which is com which comprises of drug dosage system or drug delivery system, sorry. <laughs> Mali yun nandito, drug delivery system dapat ito. And then we have the manufacturing pharmacy, jurisprudence or legal pharmacy, and physical pharmacy. So I like how these subjects are interconnected to each other. That's why they are in the same module. Kasi yung mga topics talaga nila are intertwined. So yung mga concepts nila are connected to each other. So if you're going to review this subjects, dapat talaga sabay-sabay sila, or like sunod-sunod sila, and then you have to study everything at once, like connecting all the dots so, mas maganda yun Ayan, sorry. So, I really need to check kung nababakinggan yung audio ko and if it's okay. So, we will do some flashcards again and then magsasagot tayo ng, ng pakop. And for physical pharmacy, I think ang mas focus dapat dito would be the computation. Kasi yun talaga yung pinahamahirap. So, I will like compile all the formulas formula <laughs> formula na nasa or nasa physical pharmacy and then ipapakita ko sa inyo yung mga references na magandang gamitin with this module 5 so dapat actually late na tong live na to dapat ang aking live would be before my modular exam but may mod nag modular exam na kami kahapon yes friday kahapon and Hindi ko lang makaku hindi ako makakuha ng time to to do my live. Then mag ano, mag exam kasi medyo mahaba talaga yung physical pharmacy. Yes, physical pharmacy and this module 5 and we only have like one week to review this. And ang masasabi ko na dun sa mo modular exam okay naman siya kasi naging effective yung pagre-review ko and I'm lucky I'm really lucky na yung mga ni-review ko na mga, yung mga references na ginamit ko is yun yung lumabas sa modular exam namin um, just like kung, kung mapapansin nyo wala pa akong review center pero meron kaming didactics which is like an in-house review center ko no pero more of an in-house review and ang meron kaming like one main proctor and then lahat I mean siya yung maghahanap ng mga another proctors so ang nangyayari sa amin is iba-iba yung nagtuturo per subject then iba yung gagawa ng modular exam so ang tricky doon would be pwede lumabas yung mga hindi naman naturo that's why you really need to study like you're doing the board exam or like you're preparing really for the board exam so yeah I am lucky and of course, nagbasa naman din talaga ako. And ayun, paulit-ulit lang. That's the key. Dapat paulit-ulit ka lang dun sa information. Ang module 5 is more of understanding for me. Yung mga terminologies niya are like common sense. Kasi yung mga terms is nandun na yung mismong meaning niya. Like in manufacturing, yung mga... Yung, yung mga pangalan ng machine is nandun na rin. So, yeah, dun sa mismong principles lang yung kailang aralan understanding of the main concept. So, without further ado, we will f start with jurisprudence first. Maguhin ko muna to kasi medyo nakakaya. Drug delivery system. Oh no! <laughs> Okay, alright. 
in jurisprudence, dito tayo magsastart ha, sa jurisprudence. In jurisprudence, sabi nung prof ko, ito daw yung pinaka-last na inaral niya sa module 5. Kasi nga daw, yung juris would be very much like a, uh, what do you call this? Parang, lagi mo na kasi siyang na-encounter during the, the practice or yung pagtuturo sa inyo dati no last four years like lagi mo na encounter na encounter si R810 then it's more of really like familiarization na number and yung memorization of the numbers kasi yun talaga ayoko nga nun actually kasi nga pumunta nga akong pharma kasi ayoko ng mga history na kailan namatay si Magellan charot <laughs> yung mga ganun <laughs> kung yung mga numbers kailan mga sa history ganun. Kasi dito sa legal pharmacy, tinatanong yung kailan, kailan approve yung R810-918, ano yung mga AO niya. Medyo hindi ko bet yun. Though madali naman siya, pero hindi ko lang siya. You know, my brain is kind of refusing to absorb those kind of things. Yeah. So, let's start with m- module 5, legal pharmacy or jurisprudence. Jurisprudence yung dati niyang name, but in new curriculum, it's legal pharmacy actually. Legal pharmacy. Study flashcards. Hindi ko lang kung may natatandaan pa ako dito. Yan. Kung alam niyo yung sagot, just also, uh, Just input your answers in the comments and then I will give you time to answer. And itong, itong live ko na to will also be helpful kahit hindi nyo siya mapanood ng live na live talaga. It will just be great para, ay, you know, medyo interactive but if hindi nyo kaya mapanood siya or hindi nyo naabutan, pwede nyo naman siyang i-replay. And that's the purpose of this live stream series ng review. And ayan, nasa module 5 na tayo. Last few months na lang. And, uh, matatapos na natin yung hanggang module 6. Yes, okay. The answer, uh, the answer, the question is, promulgated by government agencies for inform- enforcement and understanding of law. What kind of law is this? It's regulatory law. Ay, talaga ngayon pa sumaba yung mga aso, tumatakol sila. Sorry. Oh my god, sorry, na naka- mute pala ako. So, again, yung RA-7432 is the first Senior Citizen Act, which is the called the Senior Citizen Act. Kasi meron tayong parang two, three version. We have the first one, which is this, and then we have the um, Expanded Senior Citizen Act of 2003, which is 9257 naman. And the new pinak favorite ko at madaling tandaan is the Expanded Senior Citizen Act of 2010, which is the 9994. But in this in this um, question, it's the first one, and then it's February 7, 1992. So, yan na yun. Ayoko nyo mga ganyan. Like, an- what the hell? <laughs> Anong pake ko dyan? <laughs> but, yeah. Taste lang. Kailang, ano yun. Easy. The ethics, um, bioethic, professional ethics, it's the trust between the patient and the healthcare professional. Ito mga common sense lang ito eh, kaya kayang ihulaan i- through common sense. So, this is confidentiality. Yeah, kasi yung trust na binibigay ng patient na hindi mo ipagsasabay yung condition niya, yeah. And then, we have the date. Ano yung date ng sev- RA-7394? 
So, 7394 is the Consumer's um, Right Act. So, it's it's the right of the consumer. Kailan siya inenunciate? Okay. It's on April 13, 1992. Minsan, yung mga year na lang yung inatandaan, natatandaan ko dito. So, minsan, hula lang talaga. Sana konti lang lumabas sa board exam na ganito. I hate this. And then, A, oh, yung mga administrative order, kailangan din yan. The General Regulatory on and <laughs> Regulatory hindi. Ano yung AO number and series ng General Regulation on Enforcement of RA 3720 R8 3720 AO 62 series of 1968 Ano ang date? Kailan ang date ng 6675? Ito, favorite ko din to kasi lagi ito lumalabas It's the Generics Act of 1988 ang RA 675 so 1988 diba? September 13, 1988 is AO number C series which is the drugs CGMP in manufacturing itong CGMP ito lang ata yung AO na tatlong number if I am not mistaken oh tama it's the AO 220 of nine series of 1974 so ito lang yung administrative order na tatlo yung number. Next is, what's the universally accessible and cheaper and Ano ba yan? Universally Accessible Cheaper and Quality Medicines Act of 2008. So, it's RA 9502. Then, anong date? Kailan inanunciate ang RA 9165 or the Dangerous Drug Act? of 2008? 2008? 2002! 2002. So that's June 7, 2002. RA ng Price Act. So that's RA 5581. Who conducts the inspection for counterfeit drug. I don't know why, pero hina-highlight to ng professor namin. So, it's the FDA RO. FDRO. Food and Drug uh, Regulatory Office. Date when enunciate ang 8203. It's the special, special law for counterfeit drug. September 4, 1996. The Philippine Philippine Pharmacy Law. It's the um, Bible charot. Hindi mga Bible. Ang Bible ng pharmacy sinasabi ni Lame Mims eh. Pero ang pinaka ground and foundation of the practice of pharmacy is R8 10918. Pinilit ko yung Philippines kasi pag pharmacy law lang, that's the 5921. The date of 9257. February 26, 2004. The AO number of the advertisement and promotion to implement generic act. AO 65. Lagi rin ito lumalabas. AO 65. Generic act AO. Ethics. Association of Truth. Truth. Veracity. Generic Act of 1988 is the RA 6675. The system of laws. It's jurisprudence. Philosophy also. Yes, jurisprudence. 
absence of um, the pharmacist three times, ano mangyayari sa drug establishment? Temporary closure. AO number registration of pharmaceutical product. AO 67. Ulit. Pag 65 yung sa may generic, pag AO67 yung registration of pharmacy, pharmaceutical product, and then yung tatlo, yung number sa AO, yung 220, is on the CGMP. Yun lang yun. Um, kunin nyo lang yung mga keywords. And then the Consumers Act. Seventy three thirty three ninety four RA7394. And you have the AO number ng labeling in pharmacy products. Lagi rito lumalabas, labeling. We have the AO55. And then the FDA Act. Medyo nalilito ako dito kung ano yung FDA Act. Ano pinagkaba niya sa title ng RA um, 37, ay, 9711 dun sa number 3, yung simula 3720. Pero pag FDA Act 3720. Okay. And then the healthcare professional practice faithfully within their role. Role fidelity. Bawal daw nakiki overlap ng role. Date of RA5921, it's June 23, 1969. AO number ng licensing drug establishment. Licensing. 56, okay. 55 yung labeling. Expanded Senior Citizen Act of 2010, RA 9994. Pharmacy Law, 5921. Senior Citizen Act, Act lang, 7432. Tama. Intellectual Property Code, 8293. Expanded Senior Citizen Act of 2003, 9257. Congratulations! You got 100% easy. So next, I will going to compile yung mga formula in physical pharmacy. And if gusto nyo siyang kunin, just chat me or comment down below so that I can send you yung um, lahat na formula in PDF form. Okay?
Okay, alright, I'm back. So, medyo hindi lang nagkikip up yung screen sharing ko, kaya nag-break time ako for a little bit. And nasulat ko na lahat ng formula na kailangan yung tandaan or familiarize for physical pharmacy. So, it's it's about 3 pages. So, i-share ko to sa inyo. If gusto nyo, just comment down below. And, ayun. Nandito talaga yung sino nagsabing walang math sa pharmacy. Madami siya. Actually, and it's more of an an understanding para mas malala mo siya. So the most common na tinatanong o dapat mong tandaan dito sa physical pharmacy would be the conversion factor. So in lahat naman kahit sa pharmaceutical calculation, maraming um, maraming conversion factor na dapat tandaan. Pero in here, ang pinaka dapat mong tandaan is 1 ATM is equal to 760 mmHg or 1 ATM is equal to 101.325 kPa or kilopascal and then yung standard temperature and pressure natin would be 0 degrees Celsius is equal to 273 Kelvin 1 mole is 22.4 liter and that is the STP and ang R natin would be the 0 0.08205 liter times ATM per mole or 1.87 kal 
Trust Degmol. Yan. Madalas din tinatanong o madalas din hinahanap yung um, itong ano, uh, molar, molarity versus molality. Madalas tinatanong yan. And also yung nor normality. So, pag molarity, molarity, liters of solution yung tinatanong niya, yung nasa denominator niya. Yun, ang, sol ang solution dito, ang formula would be molarity equals mole over liters of solution. So, that's uh, yung mole is gram per molecular weight. So, kailangan mo rin tandaan yung mga molecular weight ng, <coughs> ng mga elements. For example, carbon dioxide. What's the molecular weight of carbon dioxide? Carbon is 12. Oxygen is 16. 16 times 2 kasi ang chemical formula ng carbon dioxide is CO2. Diba? So, oxygen is 2. So, calculate nyo na lang. 12 plus 16 times 2. And then, pag sulfuric acid, so that's H2SO4. So, H is, hydrogen is 1. So, 1 times 2. Sulfur is 32. Oxygen is 16 times 4. So, add nyo yun. yun. Kailangan mahalaga yun. Natandaan nyo yung mga basics na yun. And then, we have pag molality naman, molality, that would be kilogram of solution. Then, pag normality, hindi ko nasulat, is that may factor lang na nilalagay doon. Pag factor would be NaCl, ilan ang factor na NaCl? So, that would be 2 kasi dalawa yun element. Ayun lang. And then, ayun, hindi ko na iisa-isahin ito. Medyo, uh, dapat kasi alam nyo muna yung principle before going with the formula. And then, ang pinaka-teknik lang naman sa physical pharmacy is practice lang and practice. And under understanding talaga the concept behind dun sa, ano, sa principles niya. And then, ang um, pinaka-tinatanong dito would be the pH. Mga pH or mga acid-base sol uh, solution. So, dito kasi kinagumagamit siya ng negative log or mga anti-log, ganun. So, dapat alam mo kung paano gawin siya sa calculator mo. Ang, there are only sets ng calculator na ina-allowed sa farm, sa board exam. So, not all not all calculators are pwede sa board exam. So, pwede itong akin, Casio FX991MS. So, ilalagay ko yung list ng lahat ng pwede lang na calculator na pwede sa board exam. Kasi kung hindi yun, hindi, hindi okay yung calcul nyo, uh, mahirap kasi kapag nanibago ka sa calcul mo, so, hahanapin mo pa kung saan yun and it will take time. So, dapat iisa lang yun or isa lang yung gagamitin mong calcu or sanay ka na sa calcu type of calcu na ginagamit mo and then ayan um, ayun lang naman hindi ko na siya i-discuss kasi kailangan may mga may mga example dito para mas maintindihan ninyo ayan marami din lumalabas na mga first order zero order sa ibang ano ha sa ibang reference or sets of question ang pinagkaiba ng first order is that may logarithmic siya so, linear siya sa logarithmic uh, graphing paper. Pero, pag normal, would be curved siya. And, first order yung pinakaginagamit lagi sa pharmaceutical industry because ang concentration niya is not proportion with a with a yung concentration that would, would be not proportion with the time. Tama ba? Hindi pala. Uh, proportion pala siya. Yung concentration is proportion sa time. Yun yung pinaka-ideal. Kaya yun yung gusto natin sa, pharm sa pharmacy. Yung zero order naman is hindi siya connected. Ang zero order is, example nun na is alcohol. Kasi kahit gano'n ka dami yung ininom mo na alcohol in one sitting, there are certain time lang siya na may excrete sa body. So, that's zero order. Again, pag first order logarithmic yun, may LN yun. Nasa calcul nyo yun. And then, pag zero is wala. Ayun lang naman. Ang hindi pa ako masyadong magaling dito would be on the acid base kasi uh, though madali yung mga formula na kailangan mong tandaan, kailangan mo nung intindihin talaga yung um, yung problem bago mo masagutan. Hmm, ano pa ba? Ayun. And then, I'm lucky kasi uh, ginamit ko yung piots or the practice practice question for Philippine Pharmacy Licensure Examination ni Sir Jeb Patrick <laughs> Sir Jeb Patrick M. De Los Santos Sir Patrick 
M. De Los Santos. So, ito ay series of 2021. 2021 niya gina- ginawa. Pero, meron na atang new release for 2022. Pero, I think it's kinda different lang. Very slight lang different. Si Sir Patrick is our, naging professor namin siya dito sa didactics. So, tinu- siya nagturo sa amin in pharmacology. And then, yung asawa niya si si Ma'am De Los Santos would be ang tinuro niya sa amin is yung manufacturing pharmacy so naging helpful yung fee farm niya dito kasi maraming computation and ayun nga as I said in my earlier introduction yung gumagawa ng modular exam namin is different doon sa mismo nagle-lecture so na, nahita ko dito yung ibang mga formula na hindi na cover ng mismong lecture kagaya ng total porosity in, in trend interparticle porosity so na-review ko siya dito and lumabas siya doon sa mismo modular exam so uh, I'm lucky enough. Maganda ang maganda ang ano dito, ang summarization ano ba to parang rationale. Mare-review ka talaga. And ano yun? It's it's like about 550 pesos bin binibenta siya and it's high yield yung question maganda. I will link it down below pero I think uh, ano lang to eh. Parang limited lang yung pino-produce nila. Ang maganda dito is that si Sir Jeb kasi is a public health, uh, yung field niya, public health. And yun kasi yung baka daw lumabas sa licensure examination ngayon is may COVID-related. Kasi nga, you know, nagkaroon ng pandemic and COVID-related. So baka may mga question na lumabas sa mismo board exam about COVID. Like, ano yung, ano yung mis- pinakaunang drug na napurbahan sa China for COVID-19, mga ganun baka daw lumabas yun and nandito siya kasi nga public health yung pinaka ano ni Sir Jeb so yeah check them out maganda to ayun lang ano pa ba I don't know if pupunta pa ako sa Paco para aralin to ay magsagot save wait lang Ayun, in terms of dosage form and pharmaceutical manufacturing, talagang ano lang siya, palit-ulit lang siya. Ang pinaka pinag ko dito is yung mga example ng ano ng kunyari, ano ang pinaka common diluent or bulking agent that would be lactose. Tapos alin alin sa mga to ang hindi binders, starch, etc kung saan siya nakalagay na classification, ganun, ganun yung pag Uh, aral sa manufacturing par- pharmacy and then per classification talaga siya in drug delivery system naman din, mahalaga na tandaan nyo yung HLB values <laughs> ayan, yung mga HLB value kasi lumalabas to lagi like, ah uh, Kapag ang HLB value niya is 1.1 to 3, uh, is that anti-foaming, oil in water, water in oil. So, ayun. Ang, ang palatandaan ko dito would be a woods kasi A, anti-foaming, w, water over oil, 3 to 6, tas wetting agent, then oil in water, then detergent, and then solubi- solubilizer. A woods. Tinuro lang din sa amin yan. Kasi the higher the HLB value would be the, the higher or the more hypophilic yung solution. So, HLB value says about the surfactant na kailangan mong gamitin. Then, lumalabas din yung solubility number. For example, ang substance is 18, ang solubility niya, 18. 10 to 30, that would be soluble. Mga ganun. So, kailangan mo lang siyang tandaan. Ano pa ba? Ayun, 
dapat palit ulit ka lang naman yung wet granulation, dry granulation. Uh, uh, pag manufacturing pharmacy, ang pinaka uh, madami dito would be the process. Kunyari, isa sugar coating, uh, seal coating, sub coating, smoothing, si, uh, coat, coloring, coloring, and then polishing. Ayun, pinapagsunod-sunod yan. Then, madalas din, ewan ko lang kung ganun din sa mismong boards, pero madalas na nakikita ko na type ng mga question pag manufacturing would be parang siyang matching type. For example, ang cracking ba is what type of parang deficiency, ano ba to? Anong type siya ng problem? Would that, would that be tablet ah, uh, tablet processing, excipients problem, machine problem, ayun. So, ayun lang, um, quick review lang, pag tablet processing, under nun is copying, laminating, laminating, ano yung isa? Cracking. And then, cracking. And then, pag excipients is chipping, sticking, and picking, machine would be double impression, and then, more than one is mottling. So, marami yung ganun. Maraming type yung ginaganito nila. Ayun lang naman. I think kulang nga yung mga information na na-discuss namin sa manufacturing kasi marami pa yun, kunyari, yung mga dissolution type of dissolution tester. Ay, nawala na pala yung aking screen sharing. So, yun lang. Hindi ko na siguro i-discuss yun sa inyo kasi nga uh, it's more of the lecture type lang din talaga. And Ayun, ang ma ang ma advice ko lang is familiarize, familiarize, familiarize. Practice question, practice question. There are type of people na kagaya ko. <laughs> more of ano na more of more of um, parang mas maganda sa akin na inaaral ko muna and then sa ako nagte-test or yung testmanship. But after after kong mag-aral, hindi ko na binabalikan. Parang nabuboard na kasi ako kapag ina paulit-ulit kong binabasa. So, after kong mag-aral ng isang pasada, of course, after nung mismo lecture, uh, pinapa nag a na lang ako, nagsasagot na lang ako kasi mas natatandaan ko na, ah, yun pala yun, kaya pala mali ako. Ganun. Jackman, Jackman. Pero yun, that will be all na lang with this, ano, with this, live.
So thank you for watching guys. And ayan, message na lang ako. Bye bye. Nagkakaroon ako technical difficulties. So see you na lang when I see you on my next live. Anyang.